Church, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The things that we are sharing and the things that we're doing, we're being intentional so that you know exactly how to live. You know, we started off from Psalm 49 verse 4 that tells us, I know how to solve hard riddles by the hap. Did you see that? By the hap. So it tells you how to, even in the Old Testament, David knew this thing. Amen. Church, believers today should not be found complaining, murmuring. When it is tough, amen, Get when it is tough, regulate your atmosphere. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Get a song in. He said, I, I solve them. So they, st- they first start off like a problem, and he solves them. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Just get worship on, and then just keep celebrating God, being filled with the Spirit. Amen. Church, amen. amen. Halle- Thank you. Hallelujah. All right, we are going into the last session of um, this teaching, Navigated by God. Amen. And I want to encourage you, listen to me, these teachings that we have taught in the last five weeks are the most profound you will have on navigation and being led by God. Praise the Lord. Meaning if you listen to them, if you give it to any believer and they listen to the four series, they would have a very beautiful understanding on being led by God. So it's it's very, very, very important. This particular Sunday, we are going to be doing a recap and then adding some more. But I want you to pay attention. Praise the Lord. Say, I'm ready for God's word. You know, last, last week, Sunday, we taught you about the power of confession. That's, what we, that's why I spent the first few minutes confessing God's word. I hope that's how you start your day and live your day. Say, I'm born of God. Come on, I want to hear everybody. I'm born of God. Come on, I am born of God. I am a man of the Spirit. I am from above. Come on, I am born of God. Greater is he that is in me. Come on, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Come on, I've not received the spirit of fear. I've received the spirit of sonship. Shout glory. It shout glory. All right, also, even before we get again into God's word, I just remember that, you know, it was, the, it was yesterday or two days ago, it was, uh, you know, one of our fathers in the faith, the prince that actually ordained me into ministry, right, uh, many years ago, I can't remember, but yeah, he meant, praise God, uh, a phenomenal man of God that has changed this landscape, you know, of the gospel eh, all around the world. Uh, you know, uh, I, I served him as a... Uh, as a <laughs> As a disciple, served him as a pastor every, in different capacities. Amen. Praise God. You know, very, very dear to, the, to our family. Praise God. Amen. Just for a point of view of honor and acknowledgement, let's just say happy birthday, Bishop David Oyedepo. Come on. Amen. Praise God. That's where I got what I always say, amen and amen. Let's have a believing amen. I got it from him. Praise God. Many years ago. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Many things you learn from the man. You know, you know, very many things. Financial integrity. Right. Holy walk. um, You know, living by the word. Living by faith. Not being faced by what you see. Praise God. The the thing, you know, the discipline. Being a servant at heart. Amen. Praise God. Most of the virtues that I emphasize even here in this ministry, we got them directly from him. And that's the truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we want to just use the opportunity to honor you publicly and say that we love you, Papa. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's get into God's word. Amen. All right. We're going to start off today. So the subtitle is The Navigated Heart. You know, we have been using different, different, you know, subtitles. This one is the navigated heart. Meaning there is a heart posture that will ensure that you are navigated as a believer. A heart posture. Very, very important. Um, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. The heart posture. There is a heart posture that gets me navigated. Verse 97. Last week, I started from Psalm 119, verse 105. This week, I am starting from 97. Look at 97. Are you there? 
I need you to be there. Are you there? Okay, I'll wait for you. When you are there, Psalm 119, verse 97, we are looking at the navigated heart. Amen. amen. Church, amen. amen. All right, good. Look at it. It says, oh, how I love what? Thy law. Oh, how I do what? The navigated heart will be a lover of the word. Praise God. Uh, listen, I'm trying to make this practical. You will have to have schedule, routine for God's word. Because of the benefits. Although one of them is being led. But listen to what the psalmist says. Oh, how I love thy Lord. It is my meditation all the day. Praise God. Do you know the reason why a lot of people cannot apply Christianity in their daily walk because they don't, they don't meditate. It is the one that meditates that is able to apply well. So meditation leads to application. The, what we are trying to say outside of you saying this is deep is that we are trying to say that when you get God's word, you think through it. You think through it. That is the only way you can do it. Meditation. He says, I love the law. It doesn't stop there. What do we see lovers of the word doing? They meditate. They think through it. They speak the word. They think the word. He says, it's my meditation all day. Thou through thy commandments have made me wiser than my enemy. Are we together? Hey, are we together? So the enemy is not the problem. The med your meditation is the issue. Because in meditation, you are wiser than the enemy. Amen. So the word of God is practical wisdom. So the focus of the believer is not the enemy. The focus of the believer is the word. Because the word of God is wisdom. It is the wisdom for living today. It is the wisdom that makes you far above. The word of God is God's wisdom. Do not be the foolish one that looks away from the word of God. Look at it. That's God's word to us. He says, thou through thy commandment has made me wiser. So being wise as a believer is not a confession only. We start off with a confession. We continue in our confession by getting into God's word. He says you are wiser than your enemies. He says they are always with you, but your focus is not the enemy. Your focus is not the devil. Your focus is not what people, you know people are always very, very people. There are some people in this world that don't want me to succeed. That's not your problem. Meditation. Think on it. Have a routine for it. Don't let anything take it away from you. Because the more you get some things of this life to take the word away from you, you are foolisher. Amen. All right. I will show you, you know, a lot of people, I will show you some things because I will show you something. Okay. It says, look at it. It says, I have, I mean now in verse 90, 99, I have more understanding than my teachers because your, 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 your word it's my meditation. So I'm growing. I've got more understanding. This guy is saying he sees deeper because he's meditating on these things. Look, at, he says I have more understanding than the ancients, meaning the elders, the old. The word of God is God's wisdom. Look at it there. Look at it there. Verse 100. I have more understanding than the ancients. Hey, because I keep thy precepts. Say, go for the word. He says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Brethren, richly. Richly. Let it dwell in you richly. You know the meaning of dwelling? For it to dwell, there has to be meditation. How many people just eat yam? You put, take the yam, put it in your mouth, and it finds its way into your stomach. It doesn't happen like that. There must be some chewing. So if it is going to dwell, you will think through it. Amen. That's why in the parable of the sower, the Bible says the man that heard the word and then did not understand it. It says the devil came and the enemy came and took it. The word, so pay attention. Not only take the word, pay attention. You must be able to say, this is what we learned in church. This is what I learned in Bible study. How do, I'm thinking through it. So that when life issues come or before life issues come, you can apply. We just heard God's word in Psalm 49, verse 3 and 4 that says when... Tough issues happen. I play the harp and then I'm able to solve it. You know, someone can skim over it. Another person can think about it and say, wow, okay, now, hmm, that's what 
the psalmist did, and this is how he got his answer. Okay, I know what to do when I'm in a tough place to get my answer. And when issues come, we see the guy now. He's playing music and he's saying, Glory be to the Lord in the highest. What's happening? Application of his meditation. But if you don't remember what you learned last week, how do you apply it? You get what I'm saying? Church, do you get what I'm saying? Look at verse 101. I have refrained my feet from, evil, from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments that thou hast taught me. Let me tell you something. Before any challenge comes your way, God gives you the message, the way to go about it before it comes. God will always teach you. I'm saying whatever it is that you are in now, I've said it before. If you go back and look at the things you have been learning, God always has taught Amen. Exams don't come before the teachers. Praise God. Or is that in the school that you know some people, Sister Diola went to some funny schools. They can just say, enter into the class, they just say, tear a sheet of paper. You're having an exam. You may not have been taught the exam where she came from. That's how they do. Amen. Praise God. But in our own kingdom, praise the Lord, as we go in this journey, before things happen, there is already a teaching. Praise God. Sometimes say, Pastor, why is God silent in this season? Examiner does not talk during question during the exam. Do, do, do you hear your examiner talking during your exam? Amen. Praise God. Or like the school that Miss B went to. They help them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> you different people with different schools. <laughs> In that other one school, they don't even teach you and they give you an exam. In this one school, they say, so, so, so that you're not last in the class. The answer is A. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Look at verse 103. It says, how sweet are thy words. Amen. I'm already noticing that Stadiola is the object of focus to, in this service. So Stadiola will have to tell us, what is Stadiola's best food? Beans and plantain. So the Bible is saying, the way she sees beans and plantain, she sees God's word. It, 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 that, listen, you will set your affection Listen, you have in mind. It says, how sweet are thy words to my taste. Yea, they are sweet like honey to my mouth. So this man is seeing God's word like beans and plantain. Praise God. Church, praise God. How sweet are thy words to my taste. Glory to God. I, I I said all of this to just say, brother, in this journey we are talking about, the navigated heart is simply the heart that prioritizes God's word. It says in the prioritizing God's word, brother, you will be wiser than your enemies. Amen. Church, amen. The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. Let's go back. We are doing a recap. Isaiah 48, verse 17. Isaiah 48, verse 17. Quickly, it's a recap. That's our scripture, this Month that we have been looking at Isaiah 48 verse 17. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leads thee in the way that thou shouldest go. So in your notes, you should have that God's leading leads to profiting. You should have that in your notes. Amen. You should have it in your notes that in God's leading, there is a way to go. There is a way to go. You need to understand that God is not stupid. God, there is a path for us all. We all doing our part is how the will of God comes to pass. Amen. Praise God. So the point about it is that everyone is put in a place. Right? I will be judged as a pastor. If you are still a disciple, you will be judged as a disciple. There is what to do. If every of us are doing what we are meant to do, the plan of God comes to pass. Praise God. Amen. There is the the way that I am to go. How will God principally lead you? In verse 18. It should be in your note. Oh, thou hackiness to my commandments. It's still there. He says, your peace will be like a river. So the man, we now said last three weeks, that the man that gives himself to the word of God, the word of God is therapeutic. The word of God renews. The word of God is succor for your soul. The word of God is how the believer deals with his mental health. Amen. Praise God. When the mental health seems low, the believer goes and feeds more on God's word. Praise the Lord. That's why Jesus would say it in this way. Man shall not live by 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every, every, every word that comes from the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So tell your neighbor, go for the word. That's the end. Go for the word. You will be led. Praise the Lord. And like I always said, God, please, I hope this is in your notes. God leads in physical and spiritual things. God, I, I won't tell believers, God shows people the days to come with instructions on what to do. God leads in physical things. I want you to open your Bible to Jeremiah 32. Very, very interesting. God tells people about what to come. God, <laughs> you'll be surprised. Let me show you Jeremiah 32. You will have thought God is not interested in the lives of people. Who is this man, Jeremiah, a prophet of God? Where is Jeremiah in Jeremiah 32? He is in prison. Someone say prison. Why is he in prison? He told them the truth that God is going to capture the whole, uh, that, that the enemy, but the Babylonians will capture the whole of Israel, um, Jerusalem. So they put him in prison for saying the truth. Amen. Now, what did God now do to the man Jeremiah? God told Jeremiah, say God told. God told Jeremiah, go, go, God can lead the real estate brother. God told Jeremiah, go and buy the land in Anatot. Think about this. God told Jeremiah, the Babylonians are coming into this land. They will clear this land. They will burn the land. They will do all manner. He goes, he prophesies it. They put him in prison. The same God now tells him, the fact that obviously they want to burn the land, they want to clear the whole land, land, land which is the biggest deal in Israel. He says, go and buy the one from your uncle. Buy it. Brother, it doesn't make sense. It's just like me saying that there's going to be, there's war in Ukraine. They will, flood, they will flood the whole land. And then I now say, buy land in Ukraine. But God tells him, buy the land in Ukraine. And God tells him because what is going to happen is that they will clear this land. But a time is going to come in the future. I'm telling you to buy it because of the future. A time is going to come that prices of houses in this city or land in this land will be very, very high. So buy it. Someone say practical things. Church, practical things. So listen, it was God that told him. Look, look at verse 7. Meaning God can instruct you on practical things. God wants to instruct you on practical things. Look at verse 6. And the Lord said, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hanamel, the son of Shalom, your uncle, will come to thee, saying, By thee, my field that is in Anatol, for it is the right of redemption. So Hanamel, my uncle's son, came. Say, God leads. God leads. Came to me where? In the prison. <laughs> According to the word of the Lord, and said, By my field, I pray thee that is at Anatot, which is in the country of Benjamin. For the right of inheritance is thine, and the redemption is thine. Buy it for thyself. Then I knew this was the Lord, word of the Lord. Can I get a believing amen? Did you get that last part? When he heard it, it was so unbelievable, he almost did not believe it until it happened. You, I, I want you to put yourself in, in the picture. This man is in prison, he doesn't know what's going on outside. But God tells him what's going on outside is that they will clear this whole land. There will be nothing. They will burn everything down. And then buy the land. So he's thinking what's going on here. But when God said his uncle will come, his uncle came. When God said to him, uh, what do you call it? When God said to him, buy, uh, 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 your uncle will ask you to buy a land. His uncle came and bought, say buy the land. Then he said, I see. So this is from the Lord. Why? Because later we're going to see there. Look at, look at verse 15. It says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyard shall be possessed again in this land. Meaning it was unbelievable. It could not be conceived. And it was true. Babylon came and they cleared the old land. You know, you know what he did? He was in, he was in prison. That's see what God said. You'll be surprised. God told him that he should buy the land. He's in prison. God said, collect the receipt of the land. Let there be witnesses. Amen. 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 Say that there is common sense. He says, collect the receipt. Give it to somebody because they can take it away from you. Right? Let there be witnesses. 
when you bought the land. Why? Later, when land becomes something they can want to do you because you're in prison. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Is that practical enough for you to see that God deals in practical things? Why are we telling you? We are telling you because men can have the tendency to always be everywhere thinking God will leave them. What should be your boldness? God leads me. Can I get a believing amen? Church, can I get a believing amen? Come on, say, God leads me. God leads me. God leads me in practical things. Come on, God leads me in practical things. I expect God to lead me in practical things. You know, when we started off Grishans, we started off Grishans in our parlor. Right? Then we started to grow. Many people were coming to church. We started to grow in the parlor. So we just, we just felt like, you know, we needed a place to have fellowship. Right? And then, um, someone say we needed a place. Someone say practical. Yeah. So, right, we uh, were, were looking for a place to start our services. And I was reading God's word. I think I got to Luke 22 verse 10 or something like that. As I was reading it about God... Um, the triumphant entry of Jesus in a horse, Go, uh, prepare me a place. Oh, it was pre- not triumphant entry, prepare me a place to eat the Passover. And then in that place, it says, you get to a place in the upper room, fully furnished. That's where the Lord will have you have Passover. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, someone in this local church will meet another person who will take him to a building. It's on the first floor. And that's where you should have your meetings. Say practical. So I came to church and I said, somebody here will meet somebody. Who will take the person to a building? The building is on a, fa- is on a higher floor. So it's not ground floor. And the building is already decorated for us to do church. Praise God. As we have it, the next week, someone, let's sister Madeline, to a building. Amen. On the higher floor fully decorated. What am I saying to you? God leads practically. Can we get a believing amen? amen? Can we get a believing amen? That's why it is better to do what we said two weeks ago. No, last week. Um, Proverbs 3, verse 6. Is there. Proverbs 6, verse 3. When you're in Proverbs 3, verse 6, let us know. Proverbs 3, verse 6, practically. Because I know a lot of people know, oh, God leads people in ministry. But when it comes to my physical life, God will just wait for me to, to do what I like. No, God leads in practical things. Amen. And as you build communion, I mean, people know that if we were close, right? If I, apart from being your pastor, if I was good with car engineering and your car was bad, I mean, I'll, I'll come and fix it for you. That's just what it is. So it's much more of communion. God will deal with any and everything. I always tell people, give your life to God and watch. What people run around to try to fix, giving your life to God fixes it. Praise the Lord. Look at, and the Bible screams it. So get wise, because in this world, the devil's preoccupation is to ensure that the believer is busy. So the simple things where which, so God wants to lead the believer, but the, and the simple things where which the believer has to pattern himself to enjoy God's leading, the devil tries to get him away from it. All manner of excuses to get him away from it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right? Tempts him away from it. Amen. Look at uh, uh, Proverbs 3 verse 6. Please understand, when we are talking about follow, be re- following God, be ready to face challenges and be ready to sacrifice things. But always understand that the man, not that that's the motivation, but I have learned from experience that the man that sacrifices for God never comes out short. Amen. Amen. And that is why it's, a, it's, it's I'm talking about the what? The, 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 the navigated heart. Look, look, look at Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. This is the end of anxiety. He says, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, do what? Acknowledge. That's what we learned. We're doing a recap. In all your ways. Your ways are physical and spiritual. Acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Say, I can never not be directed. That's it. Amen. Praise God. Church, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> You know, one of my best books I'm reading right now is the book of Jeremiah. Very, very interesting book. 
right? They will ask the Lord for something. They will ask Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, don't worry. Don't worry. Give it time. God will speak to us. There was one of those times they asked him, because they said, God is going to speak to us. And God spoke to them after 11 days. You know, sometimes in acknowledging the Lord, it's, it's a beautiful thing to wait. Praise God. It's a beautiful thing to wait. You know, when we're trying to get into where we are right now, the, the old church leadership, church, church members, church leadership, church deacons, even visitor, was almost tired of where we were. But we'll talk to the Lord and say, I'm going to do it. Miss Bill, come here and prophesy. We're going to a place, a large place. Right? And it even got to a point that, at a point, it looked like we have gotten something. The deacons went there to look at it. It was almost like it was done. It fell short. And God said, I will do it. Don't worry, I'll do it. My pastor came to church, professor, and told us, July, it's going to happen. God is going to set it up. You're not going to do anything. We have been struggling with this thing. And we, I'm saying, from that time we've been waiting to the other time. There is a tenor you say, where is God? What is God doing? But God makes everything what? Beautiful in his own. Now, this is a temporary abode. Amen? We'll be here for, just but for a while. On to another place. Much more permanent. Right? But it's also in the timing of the Lord. My point is, just enjoy walking with the Lord and you are fine. Amen. He says, if you would acknowledge him, he would direct your paths. If you do not hear anything, do the last thing you were doing. He instructed you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He would direct your path in practical things. I, if I'm to give stories about leading, stories about leading, we will not live here. But it's practical, practical, practical in your life. Acknowledge him in all your ways. He will direct your path. Why? Psalm 23, verse 1, uh, 1 to 2. What you learned last week. We're doing a recap. The Lord is my... Oh, the Lord is my... Uh, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Hey, people are afraid. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not... He does what? He makes me to lie... Who lies down? Who makes me lie down? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He does it. What is my job? I personally believe that leading is simple. If you actually have a consecrated heart of, unto Jesus I surrender. He will bring his will and his counsel to you. Praise the Lord. It, it might not be what you like. But it's what is the best for you. Praise the Lord. Pray. God did not promise you what you like. You are a part of a plan. Get used to it. And stop complaining. And it's the best for you anyway. Praise God. When you are outside of God's plan, you are abusing yourself. He makes me lie down in green pastures. God did not say bad things do not happen. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I do not fear any evil. Why are you not fearing? There is a God with you who you acknowledge, who directs your path, who will keep you. Praise God. Church, praise the Lord. So you are not that person that is always anxious. Who will I marry? When will I marry? What happened to this? What happened to that? What? No, you are not that kind of person. You are actually, uh, it's either you be a believer and be a believer indeed. God is your father. He will lead you. He will direct you. It's a fact. You are not the first. In fact, he is committed to leading you. Can we get a believing amen? amen? And finally, in our recap, we said, the man that focuses on the general, God will lead him to the specific. Praise the Lord. Now, well, I'm giving you tips. Or the, meaning, meaning you, with this information, you are armed to ensure that no matter the phase of life you are in, you are led by God. If you would embrace the general instructions of God, the general instruction of man, man ought to pray and faint not. Rejoice in the Holy Ghost. Walk in love. Serve. Evangelize. Do, God judges you based on the information you have per time. Amen. 
praise God. Go for the generals and be big on it. Say, ah, why, why, why are you rejoicing? Because the Bible says rejoice in the Holy Ghost. And I say again, rejoice. That's Proverbs, uh, um, um, Philippians 4 verse 4. Praise the Lord. In everything, give thanks. This is the will of God concerning you. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16. Learn to do the general. Do not, do not walk in bitterness, envy, strife. Amen? It tells you there, walk in love. Be big on the general. That's who believers are. Be big on the general. Because the general is the word of God. The word of God is God. The word of God is Jesus. Amen? Be big on it. Go, the word of God is God speaking to you. The moment you hear God's word, be big on it. It's like I said, we said we, last week, because we are ending our recap. He says, do not forsake the assembling together as the manner of some is. Be big on it. Be a cheerful giver. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound. That they walk in contentment. And they're able to give. Be a giver. Praise God. That's what the Bible says. So, the man that will focus on the specific, the general, and be radical. Someone say radical. Radical with the general. He that wins a soul is wise. Get out there and you're winning souls. Talking to people about Jesus. The general. Listen, instead of saying God, 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 God says, Flee, do the general. I will bring the specific to you. You will just know what to do. This is the natural way we get led in our kingdom. Can I get a believing amen? Now, can I get a believing amen? Like, you know, like we've said, God wants to lead you. God loves to lead you. God can never leave you. He cannot. You can silence him. You can grieve the spirit. Right? You know what grieving the spirit is? Just, God, like, Grieving the spirit is choosing to disobey the word. You can. Say, no, no, Lord, leave this one. I'm going to tell this lady in my mind. How many people have wanted to post something, say something, and the Holy Ghost within you is saying, it's okay. Say, no, 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 no. Do you know who I am? They say, it's okay. You say, no, 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 no. Okay, the Holy Ghost is not watching you. You've now abused the person. You've given the person a point. They've told you, don't, 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 don't. No, 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 no. You see that now? Do you have the Holy Ghost? You have the Holy Ghost. For you to have done that, what happened? You have silenced. You have not taken. You know, I know that sometimes, but Father Dyer, be real now. When things are happening, you don't have time to check inside. Your, your hand has all gone. <laughs> Say, be, be real, be real. I've said it already, Pastor. There, is there another new mechanism you can give us? Because when my blood is hot, my blood is hot. Say, I'm born again. You know, this, you will not perfect this act in one day. It's progress. Just keep going. Hallelujah. But be big on the, specific, on the, on the generals. You, you, as long as you are big on the generals, you can boast everywhere. I'm in God's perfect will. Because God will bring his specific to you. The, the genuine tender heart that is big, I'm telling you, that is big on the, God will bring the specific to you. Well, when he brings the specific to you, it's also up to, up to obedience. Praise God. And I'm talking about specific things. Practical things. I wish, I wish I had time to give stories. I have many. Praise God. Many. On practical things. That's why, like I said to you, get the word of God in communion. God will get to you. God is a lover. He's a lover. There was a time that, you know, I, I needed to have a job. Right? And then, and when I go for interviews, I go the way I come to church. Very well, smart, and all of those kind of things. I'll go. I say again to a point, they'll say, You are the best dressed, you are the most intelligent, but you are too qualified. So I started removing all my, my certifications. I'll just put one basic one. They just, I just didn't get the job. Like with all of this anointing, what's going on? But you know what? In those days, you would not even know. Celebrating God. Glory to God. Father, we give you praise. With five pounds in my account, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Speaking God's word everywhere I walk. The, the. One, one of those days, God just told me, you are going for this interview. Don't wear that shoe. Wear this one. Practical. Don't wear that shoe. Wear this one. Amen. Don't wear that shoe. Wear this one. And I said, okay, yeah. 
And then we, I got to it again, well-dressed and everything. Ah, I started hearing, oh, well-dressed. Blah, blah, blah. I was not in my mind. I'm thinking, I, I just heard you, you've gotten it. Ah. And then I did not even know why I got the job. Six months later in the job, the man just said, you know, you were toe-to-toe with the other guy. But I just loved your shoe. It's my type of shoe. Practical. Praise God. I am saying, I am saying practical things. Practical things comes your way in doing the general. You even know what to do. In do by doing the general, you know what to do. There was a time that there was an opportunity for promotion and my workplace, because, if I, because this is a concluding series. If I don't make you see, it's practical. You, practical, there was a time there was, you know, there was in, my, in my organization, you know, there was an opportunity for a promotion, but I have to badmouth and, it's not badmouth, tell people what I know. And at that point, I just said, no, I'm not going to be the reason someone falls down. You see, evil people always meet their end. How do we know? The Bible says so. You don't have to be a part of it. You have to be arrested in the fact that God is the one driving you. Amen. Okay, they said, will you come and give a statement to just take the person out because you are the kind of leader we want. Be careful with all those kind of people. Those praise singers, they will do the exact same thing to you. I said, no, no, no. There's no need for that. I'm not, I'm not having a word. They said, HR Kim, there's no need for that. Right? Just few weeks after. The kind of things I experienced, if I say it here, it would be like I'm bragging. I am saying it was just the general love walk. Mind your business. That leads, that, that leads me to give me the answer of what to do. So I'm talking about two things here. The general, do it. The specific will come. That's one. I'm also saying the general will answer many questions in your life. Praise the Lord. Just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, my point to you very clearly is this. God loves you. He can never leave you. Let me even tell you something and show you something from scriptures that will make you forever bold. That God will always lead you. Look at what Jesus said about God in John chapter 5. John chapter 5. So I say, I, I, I'm always led. Come on, I am always led. Because the intent, the intent is you to be confident in the fact that God leads you. We'll look at one way God leads you, and we close today. Are you in John 5.20? For the Father, come on, the Father loved the Son. And what does the Father loving the Son lead to? And showed him what? All things. That, are you there? That he himself do it. And will show him. Greater works than these that ye may. What is the reason the Father shows the Son? Love. Why will God show you? Why will He lead you? Love. So I'm trying, I've spent this whole first good part of this message to tell you that God loves you and He will show. As a believer, what do you say? God loves me, He shows me. Jesus said it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm not the kind of parent that says, you know what, uh, well, 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 well. We don't know how it's going. Say we, we know. It's either we will get to know or we know. God does not leave us desolate. Can I get a believing amen? amen. Don't, so don't, don't let the system of this world, the system of the country, pressure you into making decisions that are outside of God. Let me tell you, whatever God cannot give you, let it remain undone. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you the way it always happens. Like with me and my wife anyway. You know, my wife always calls, comes to me and says, look at this particular shoe or shirt or car or this. There is a sale on it. The sale is four days or two days or one day or 30 minutes. If you don't buy it now, mm, 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 uh, uh, the shoe has gone and you can never see that shoe again. It's not true. What come here? You're not looking at it. You're not looking. Where do I borrow this? Mm, 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 mm. I, I have to make it. They are not telling you 13 minutes more. 13 minutes more. Can you see the reader? He's reading. He's reading. He's reading. Ta mm, mm, mm. You're saying, mm. hey, hey. Then you now buy it. Guess what happens to you? Two days later, you see that same shoe later in, at a lower price. What did they use it for? They use it for you. Don't let is this. That thing is the world system. It's the world system. They will be hurting you. This only shoe. Have you not seen all those shops? There are some shops that are in, um, that are in, that are in White Chapel. 
They have been closing down since I came to this country. Closing down sale, closing down sale. So that <coughs> you come, are you still here? I say, yeah, we are still closing down. Why? Because closing down sale, this, this shoe, eh? this shoe, we are closing it down today. You go there tomorrow, it's still there. But they will catch you. Because the man is like, hey, if I, don't, if I don't buy it now, ah, look at it, it's very cheap. That, that's why people break out billionaires, because they, they are billionaires every December. They are waiting for you. They will just set the price. Phew. December sales, after 24, you need to buy a gift for Sister Victoria. If you don't buy it 24, it's over. It's not true. In February, they'll bring it out again. <laughs> Amen. Understand it. That's the way the, the compromise comes. They will tell Abraham, we are go- you're going to have a child. God will do it. Sarah will tell you, well, Genesis 16, bro, bro, enter my maid. Go and get her pregnant. This God, I don't think this God is. The point is, they gave back to Ishmael. God said, that's not what I promised you. What I promised you will come by my hand. Then later, in, in, in Genesis 21, we have Isaac. God now says, God has made me laugh. All that hears will laugh with me because it has ended with Abraham and Sarah after the order of men and women trying to do it by themselves. God promises us something. Continue with the general. Apostle general, they've told you you'll be apostle general. Don't go and try to be apostle general. Just come to church on Sunday. Serve God where you are. Happily doing so. Doing the general. You wake up becoming a general. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Let's start to try to conclude now. What kind of heart experiences God's leading? One for us today, the consecrated heart. The consecrated man is the navig. This man is a man that Jesus is the center of his life. And this produces desires naturally. The man that has a heart for the Lord. Now li- listen, God already loves everybody, praise God. But the consecration is that though God loves us all, you, are, you respond to that love actively, that it affects your lifestyle. That's what consecration is. Praise God. Church, praise the Lord. The consecrated man will be navigated by God easily. A man, who is a consecrated man? A man interested in fulfilling God's will. See, until you come there as a person, life for you will be hit and miss. I'm telling you, until you come there as a person, oh Lord. That's why at the end of this service, you're going to pray. Because in Christians, from time to time, we have consecration services. Where which, because people get into the rat race of doing many, many things. A man whose heart is for Jesus. A man interested in God's will. A man who is following the Lord, not for what God can give him. Not from what he can get from the Lord. A man that is just, how I love thee, O Lord. Psalm 69, verse 3. He says, oh, your unfailing love is more than life. Therefore, I praise you. I love you, O Lord, more than the greatest feasts. And if you know the olden days, guys, they knew how to throw a party. It's not this kind of party that Fola holds. She invites us at 4 o'clock, and then we are all living at 7. Those guys knew how to party in those days. You will see food going, not the one that there is, you, you serve yourself. And all those beautiful things. Now, those are, we're, we're, amazing, we're, 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 we're calculating chicken. It's not those kind of ones. It was when there was a feast, a king's feast, everybody celebrating. It was the big deal. He said, oh, how I love thy Lord. I love thee, O oh Lord, more than the greatest feasts, more than the greatest parties. You, Lord, ah, thank you. That's what he got. And now, listen, do you know how that happens? It, it, it's not like, ah, I know what to do now. <laughs> Is it not loving God? How does that happen for you? It's through meditation. You med- because meditation is what leads to application that we will see. It is you meditate on the fact that he died for me. He gave himself for me. He died for me. He gave himself for me. My life is not worth anything but serving him. Until you get there, life is hit and miss. Let me show you. The consecrated life is captured in one verse by Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. The consecrated life captured in <laughs> one verse by Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 
Are you in verse 14? Are you there? Quickly, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? I have... I have 15 more minutes. Are you there? Look at verse 14. For the love of Christ has constrained us. Do you know what I mean of constraint? There, there are many things we want to do we don't do. Amen? Why? The love of Christ is the reason. How did he constrain us? We are meditators. Look at it there. For we judge. So are you seeing you're thinking through? How many people know that he judge things? He hears the case and he just... Yes, uh, Fola was the one that took the uh, sister deal last week. Hey, no, no, Fola is guilty. No, she we will hear Fola. No, I bought a week from Sister Deola. She did not bring it, and then I took the one on her head. So he's now asked to judge. Are you getting the point? So he says, For we thought judge. Meaning you think it through. How do I become a lover of God? It is through meditation. I'm thinking it through. I thought it through that he died for all. And in dying for all, all were dead. Look at verse 15. And that he died for all. Are you in verse 15? I want you to be there. You want you to see it yourself. I meditated to the point that I saw that he died for all. And now that he died for all, I've all heard the message. Do all know. But look at verse 15. And he died for all. That they which live, uh, please pay attention. They which live should not henceforth live unto so they should not enter but live unto, but unto Christ that died and rose again. So the believer is not one living unto his selfish desires. Consecrated heart. L look at it again. That they live not unto themselves. So who is the man that is not born again? The man that lives unto himself. Who is the carnal believer? The man that lives unto himself. Who is the consecrated believer? The man that judges that Christ died, and since he died, he died for all, so I live. I now live my life. Are you there? Are you there? I live my life no longer unto myself. So listen, the point here is the man, selfishness, dies because this man knows that Christ died for him to live. You will have to have this as your meditation consistently. Can we get a believing amen? That a man lives. He lives no longer unto himself. And do you know something? When you are that kind of person where which you know it's not about what you can gain, what you can have. You have beaten life more than 60%. More than you have beaten life. You have won on earth. This is the man that God, this is the man, this is the positioning. Please listen, it's very, this is the high point of the message. This is the positioning that makes God's leading very clear to you. Let me give you an example as we round off in this service. It's the story of the man called David that you all know that Jesus, God said, this is a man after my own heart. Look at the, the Bible in 2 Samuel 7. This is a very, very strange thing. This man, I want you to open there and I want you to see. I am talking about the consecrated heart. 2 Samuel 7. In 2 Samuel 7, David just finished building his mansion. Are you with me? And he was sleeping in his room one day and he said, ah, ah, How could it be? Someone say, A lover. Come on, a lover. He said, How could it be? That I am living in a mansion and the house and God does not have a house of his own. It is not, it's not that he was instructed. He just was thinking. Why? Because this man is thinking about the things that pertains to God. He said, how could it be? How can I be in all of this? In God's house. Does it, God does not have a place called his home. You know what? I am going to go and meet the prophet. And I'm going to institute something. We will build a house for God. And the prophet said, okay, go. Go and build a house for God. That very night, the Lord appeared to the prophet Nathan and said, tell him that he's not the one that will build the house. His son will build the house. You know, he said, tell him, do you know that when they told David, because sometimes when they told David he's not the one that will build the house, see the kind of heart he had. He didn't get angry. Amen. Sometimes a lot of us want to do good, but we want, we want to do good because we are the center of it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The guy didn't get angry. Do you know what this guy did? 
this guy called David, after hearing that the Lord said he should not build the temple, he now said, okay, you said I should not build the temple. It's not a problem. But whenever it is that we're going to build the temple, you have said my son will build the temple. Whenever we are going to build the temple, I am going to ensure that I will provide for the building of the temple. Then this man by himself, over 113 tons of gold set aside for the building of the temple. The whole Israel brought about 165. This man brought alone 113. A heart after God. Not because of anything. Not because it's the center city. There are a lot of us here that you know what God wants to do. You know what, what God is doing. You will not be the center of it. It is your heart that now makes you plug into it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Chot, are you getting what I'm saying? It's, we're talking about a consecrated heart. This man said, you're not the one to build a temple. He said, not a problem. Do you know that he kept that heart that by the time it was first Chronicles chapter 28, verse 19, the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon David and he drew all the elements of the temple. He was not an architect. The hand of the Lord came on. Why? Because of the kind of heart that he had. First Chronicles 29, 1 to 7, documents how this man was saying, no, I'm not the one to build this house, but all of this gold. Right before he died, he said, all, every of this thing for the Lord, a heart for the things of God. Can I get a believing amen? A consecrated heart. Let us look at the story again. Remember, this man was just by himself. That's why I say, see, as you sit down and you're thinking about stuff, you might desire to do some things. Go ahead and do it. If God doesn't want you to do it, he will stop you. When he stops you, <clears throat> don't get angry. Can we get a believe in amen? Don't get angry. Be a part of whoever it is that he said will do it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because we are, God, God, God told him, oh, it's such a noble thing that you want to build me a house. But see, listen, you're, you're not going to build me a house. Amen. Praise God. You're not, you're not going to build me a house. Your son is going to do it. And at the end of the day, even though, praise God, praise God, even though he was told that he's not the one that is going to do it, even though he was told he's not the one, he was part of it. A consecrated heart. A heart that is after the Lord. Can we get a believing amen? It is after the things of God. The, because when your heart, you know, that's why the Bible will tell you, set your affections on things above. The remaining will pan out. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Set your affection on things above. Set it. Every other thing will pan out. The, 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 things, that every, the things that everyone is struggling about. Direction, it just comes naturally. It comes naturally. Why? You are that man. You've given your heart to the Lord. Listen, you've given your heart to the Lord not because of what you can get from it. Let me, let me, let me be very, very clear without any kind of hypocrisy. Does God bless the works of our hands? He does. But he doesn't do it because you did it so that he can bless it. That's the difference. God blesses. He does not forget the labor of love. The man that reaps shall sow. But the man that is sowing is not sowing so that he can reap. That's the point. In Galatians 6. Amen. So the heart of a man, our heart in the things of God is crucial. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Our heart is crucial. A consecrated heart. A consecrated heart. A heart that is he, 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 the things of God are his desires. Where you are, listen, God will use you in your generation. Amen. It was already part of the plan. Yes. God will. But what will it take for that plan of God to come to pass? A consecrated heart. Li write it down, if that's the only thing you want to write down. Direction is a byproduct of consecration. Direction, meaning that the man who says, God, unto Jesus I surrender in my house, in my home, in my this, in my that, in my business. That man, that very man will be directed according to God's word. Our anxieties are a proof that we think. That's why some, if, I always tell people, people, some people might not like it, that's me. That's me. If you come around and you want to cheat me, I laugh at you. I have a backing that can, it can never, ever be depleted. 
So there is no anxiety. Amen. Praise God. Stop feeling G3 about, stop feeling G3 that there is no God. God works with you. God lives with you. God helps you. God provides for you. You are the one with the advantage. Amen. Not the disadvantage. God tells you what to do. God shows you the way to go. God informs you. He tells you. If you're a pastor, let it be rest in your mind that if there is something you need to know about your congregation, God will tell you. If you're a deacon, if there's something you need to God will lead you. God will direct you. Where is your path? Where is your posture? A consecrated heart. That is just burning for the things of the Lord. Because you have continually meditated on the love that God has for you. This is the conclusion. If God loves us, do we not love our brethren? In doing the general, the specific comes. The consecrated heart cannot miss God. Even in zeal, and when he makes a mistake, God will correct him and bring him back. So he's always in safety. Praise the Lord. A consecrated heart is always protected. Burning for the things of God. You see the same man, Paul. Paul in Acts 27. This man is on a journey, a consecrated life. Preaching the gospel, he's been captured by the enemy. The Bible says they are going on a journey. He even tells them, don't go on this journey. But he was a prisoner. The Bible says they went on the journey. The Bible tells us that an angel of the Lord came. Are you hearing me? And told Paul, though they've disobeyed, but for your sake, this whole people here and you, you are kept. A con so don't sell yourself cheap. A consecrated heart is God's power point, power man, superman on the earth. That consecrated man, leading, direction, provision, guaranteed. Hallelujah. Everything that has to do with God's plan and purpose for the consecrated man, God brings it his way. A consecrated heart, leading, direction, correction, protection, provision, all guaranteed. What is the calling today? It looks like we are talking about the leading of God, but no, really. We said everything we said for four weeks or five weeks to get you here, to help you know that the real mystery to being led is a consecrated heart. For in consecration, everything flows. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the consecrated man says, I fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. Rise upon your feet today. Come on, rise upon your feet today. Because, yeah, why well, stop two minutes earlier that you may pray? You would open up your mouth and pray. Amen. I want you, wherever it is that you are, because this is very, very important. I mean the whole five weeks. I said everything I said to get here. Everything I said is to get here. Everything I said, a consecrated heart is the, is the heart that is able to pick and do and walk. The consecrated heart will know. The consecrated heart will be directed. Brother, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. I don't want you to act like maybe there are people here in this meeting with you. Open up your mouth and pray. Have a time with the Lord. A consecrated heart. A consecrated heart. A consecrated heart. In all we have been trying to get to you for five weeks is that it's a heart posture. A heart posture. A heart posture is trust in the Lord with all thy hearts. That's it. A heart posture. You know, there's a tendency that you are here and you are always anxious. This is that time again that you have that conversation with the Lord and have that, con Lord, I acknowledge my witness in this particular area and now I, I choose to remember that you will, you will never leave me nor forsake me. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I am never at a disadvantage. For all things work together for good for me. So there is no need for anxiety. There is no need to just quickly make that decision. Make that decision. Just move. Just do things. Come on, I want you to pray. I have one more minute here. You are praying today in the name of our Lord Jesus. You are praying in the name of our Lord Jesus. You are praying. You are praying.
praying. We heard how Jeremiah was in prison. God gave him instruction on what to do. There is no way a man needs that he will not be led. A consecrated heart. A, in the name of Jesus Christ. A consecrated heart. A faithful man. A consecrated heart. A faithful man. A consecrated heart. That one that puts Jesus first. Burning with the passion of the love of God. For his love is greater than wine. Oh, that's what Songs of Solomon says. Kiss me with the kisses of your lips. For your love is greater than wine. We have one more minute in this service to pray. We are actually praying. Lord, listen, if you, you need help, you be, this is the time you are talking to the Lord. Because God's will and God's plan, you are a part of it. Everyone is important. My heart posture in my life, in my family, in the decisions that I make, in everything concerning me. Oh, for God's work to be done. For his plan to be done. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I walk. I walk. I walk in the light. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, the word of God dwells in my heart richly. I give time for this. Ah, I give time for this. In the name of our Lord Jesus, I set up routine. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are praying. You are praying. You've got 30 more seconds now. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, knowing there is a plan, knowing there is a plan, there is a way that you are to go, and there is a navigation within. There is a navigation within the inner witness. There is a navigation without the word of God. Ah, there is a posture of the heart, a, a posture of the heart. Jesus, you are first. Jesus, you are priority. Jesus, you are first. Jesus, you are priority. Lord, nain singri e kalosha Ah, rita sekate kateya. Regardless of where I am, Jesus, you are first. You are praying. In do singri e kalosha kata ga. E eragusta gada geshu. Engre e kadai. E and they that live, they live no longer unto themselves, but unto Jesus Christ, who died and was raised for them. Let's lift up our hands today. Father, we give you praise. We give you the glory. In this meeting, you've spoken to us. And we go forth to meditate on the things that you have said. That we might be able to apply it in our lives. That you will continually be first in our lives. Just like in the book of 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. We go back in meditation to examine ourselves. That we are still operating in the faith for we are not reprobate father we give you praise we give you the glory in jesus mighty name and the saints you say Amen. and the saints you